Hello everyone, today I'm gonna show you a little bit of Dynamo. I, I did this uh, facade study a couple of weeks ago and uh, I promised that I would show how I did the Dynamo part where I control this uh, variation of the facade with Dynamo as well. I did it manually without Dynamo if you don't want to use Dynamo. But then I showed how you could uh, change uh, things automatically using Dynamo and uh, I promised that I would show how to create the graph from scratch. So that's what I'm going to do today. Let's start off Dynamo. I'm going to start from a new file. So the first thing we want to do is select the... As we saw in the video, we want to select the elements. And by selecting a certain elements, we want to, to sort them and arrange them with a different array. If you remember, if you watched the last video, you see that this family that I created, it's a curtain panel family, that I've given a, an array parameter that changes the width of the panels by changing the array. So it just works like that, it's not a complicated family to create, you can watch the other video if you want. But then, this is all we want, we have a parameter here, and the, an instance parameter that has an array that we want Dynamo to change. So, going back to Dynamo, the first thing that we're going to do is select the model elements. And there is a note for that. Usually you can navigate here, but anyway, you can search here. What we want to do is select model elements, so I, you can just type it there and search. So we can find to here what we want to select multiple, so it's the second one. Uh, because I have this in automatic, it's already running and it has a warning, so it turns yellow. And this means that, and the reason why it got an warning is because I, I haven't selected anything. So it, it's waiting for an input. And the way you do it, you hit select, and you have to come in Revit, select panels. So right now what I selected, I selected probably floors or another wall. So all the, these element numbers that you see here, they are element IDs. Uh, but they are from everything that I selected. Of course, I could just isolate the panels and I, I was sure that I would only pick panels to make sure that it always works and people don't have to be worried so much about isolating panels. I'm going to create first a filter that uh, removes from these list of IDs anything that's not a curtain panel. So that was the first step that I did. And the other way to search for things, you can just right click here. I want the element category and I have this one, get element category. So if I connect the wires from these two nodes and if I come here to the bottom, I can find this pin to show me a preview of what I've selected. So I selected walls and grids, curtain wall grids and panels and a bunch of what I want to do is check which one of these are curtain panels. So I just did a simple test to see if any of the elements that I have there are curtain panels. And so I use this node uh, to check if something is equal. Another thing you can do is also double click the canvas and you get this code block. It's a block that you can write uh, anything. What I would do there is I would come here, I would check exactly of the category that I want this uh, so I have to write it exactly the same. And I have to do this in quotation marks because I have to tell Dynamo that this is a string, uh, so that this is text. Uh, so you have to do the, you have to tell it the format of the information that you're giving. And uh, so I would connect this one to Y, I would connect the other one to X. The thing here is that this list that we have here they are not actually text. So you're gonna get a false for everything, not finding any true meaning that any of these are curtain panels because we're getting elements. It's an element, it's not actually a, a word a text. So you compare it with words, uh, it, knows, it tells that it's not the same. We're missing a node here that, that will be string from object, we can search. So from this list, we again get another, but this time this list is strings. Once I do this, you'll see that we get a few trues. 
So the next thing that we want to do is we want just the true elements. So we want to make out of the list of elements uh, which of these are the curtain panels. And the way we do that to grab the position of each of these elements, we use this list all indexes of. So this one all indices of. So what we want is from this list, we want all elements that have true true and this time we don't write the quotation marks because we don't want to text true this is actually this uh, boolean if i connect this one here i'll get only the indices so the position of each of the true so you do this one get item at index and these are our list of indexes and the elements are those and if you see, we have the green ID number, it means that we're picking up an element, not just the text. So we actually have the element. So these are all our curtain walls, filtered out of the walls or anything that we might have selected. So now we're going to start the main part. So what I want is to get the position of each of these elements. I want to know where they are, because I want them to start uh, spreading out in a certain order. When I pick the elements and I have that list, that list is not on a specific order. Uh, it's an order of how they were created. You don't know if they were created from uh, left to right, or right to left, or top to bottom. So what I want to do is make sure that I get an order based on a position. So how am I going to do that? It's by getting the position, the x, y, z, of each one of these elements. So the way I do that, there is this uh, node that says solid centroid that will return the point at the center of the geometry. But these are not geometries, these are just elements, or Revit elements. And uh, to get the geometry, I have to use another node to get that. So it's called element geometry. And if I connect this, you'll see that we get a list of solids and we get lists of lists of solids and uh, the reason is because each one of this ID if I have an array with with four elements within that curtain panel each one of these curtain panels has four solids on that array so you want to know the, the actual panel itself if the curtain panel is this it's picking three solids for each curtain panel we don't have to get the center there. It doesn't matter if it's here or there, because in the end, the order I want, the panel that's on the left is first, the other one is after, the other one is after. So it doesn't matter if I'm picking this element or that element, it will always be in the right order. So all that I'm going to do is just get the first solid of each panel, and that will be enough. And I do this just by getting the first item of each one. So we have five that we're picking this first. Just change the levels here. So what it gave me back is the first item of each list. Just by adding this level two, it's now picking the first solid of each list. So now that we have all these elements, one solid per panel, we can get the centroid. And finally, we can get our XYZ values. So what I'm going to do in order to get them sorted is I'm going to take this point, deconstruct, and what this gives me is a list of numbers, each point giving me a list of x, y, z. And so what I'm going to do is just sum these up. I just add them all up. If the number changes in x or in y, the total is increasing, and I'll get the order that I want. So I do this by typing here x plus y plus z and this will give me three inputs here that I can connect each of these elements and now a list of total of each one of these lists. If I check I have 17 still. Great, I have all the positions. All that I have to do now is sort them so that I have this list organized in the order that I want. So I can so, and this one will give me the positions of each one of these in the order that I was looking for.
after reordering all these points, we want to go back and actually reorder the elements. And we do this by using this reorder node. What we got here are the indices of each element. So we connect here. But the list, what we actually want, are curtain panels. And our curtain panels, we, we got them here. Now we have the list of panels in the order that we want. And we going to create a, a same list. We'll want the same list with the same number parameter that we're going to write. So if you select the parameter, it's called array, and this, there is this number. We know that the array should never be less than 2, because if not, it will give you an error. And uh, if, for instance, if you try 10, they're all too close together. In this case, the closest that they should be together for us would be 6. Your list should start at a minimum of 2 and a maximum of 6. If we wanted to do this waving thing that I did, we would want it to start at 2, go up to 6, and then start going down to 2 again. So we have this number of panels. We want a list with the same number of elements, but going from 2 to 6 and down to 2. How do we do this? There is this way of creating lists that if you say from you say this, we're going to have a list of numbers that goes from 1 to 10. The one that we want, however, is the one that you use this hash. So what we want, as we said, is to go from 2 to 6. And the number of times that will go depends on this, because our list needs to have the same length as this. But we don't only want to go from 2 to 6, we want to go from 2 to 6, and then from 6 down to 2 again. How to make sure that this list has the same number as that? In this case it has 10. We would, we'd know that this list should only have 5 elements and this should have another 5. And if we put the list together, so if we join the lists together, what this node wants is the number of lists and what we get is a, a list of ten elements, just like we wanted. Actually, it's 18. I wasn't looking at the rest. Uh, so we have 18 elements. But anyway, this number is never going to be exact. That will select however many elements we select. So we want to count them. We want to know how long this list is and make this list be the same length. How we do it, we use this count note that will give us a, a total of how many elements are there. So if we want that to be 10, this one should be 9, because we want it to be 9 here and 9 in the bottom. So this number 9 is half of that. So we need to make that calculation. Because to do that, that, it's easy enough. This can't be a number. It has to be a variable. A variable is any text. But our variable is this AA. It creates a variable that you can now connect. And uh, the variable that we want is not actually this, but it's half of that. So we'll do the same here. Great, so now the list that we have, you see here, it goes 2, 2.5, 3, all the way to 6. Then it goes all the way back to 2 again. We have 18 elements, we have 18, that's all that we want. But there is still one problem here, is that... In the middle, we're going to have two number six. You might want that, but you might not. And I don't think I, I would, because I want it to go up to the top and go straight going down. So we want to remove one of these elements. So to do that, I can get uh, this one that's called drop items and give it minus one. And when I give it minus one, it will drop one here uh, at the end. So if now I connect this list here, you'll see that we, we have a, what we want. It goes to 6 just one time and then goes back down. We have a list of array number and we have our list of panels there. All that we got to do is match these numbers into the array parameter of each one of these panels. So to do that, we use this set parameter by name. Here, set parameter by name. And we want to name all these curtain panels, so the ones that have green ID. So we want to name the elements. 
that have a parameter name called with the values that we just sorted. Okay, we're gonna select again, we select all these and it's gonna run. And actually it did the opposite that we were doing before. It concentrated the six array in the middle. I forgot that we were doing uh, the other way around. Simple enough, we want this to start at the number with more bigger array. Go up to the smaller number, like that. And if we look at it now, it's doing what we want. The thing that I did in my last video was shuffle them in case you wanted to do a different thing with it. And that is the, the easier, easiest part. If you want to do that, there is a fall node. It just shuffles the list. And if we do this, you'll see that those are shuffled. If now we select uh, every element, it's going to shuffle them again and do something completely different. You can continue to run it a few more times to shuffle so that you get different results. But anyway, I, I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching. See you next time.